Babi, President Babi. Bola Tinubu inaugurates Presidential Committee on Fiscal Reform, on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, set 18% tax to GDP ratio in three months. Welcome to Business Daily. I am Yusuf Akogo. We take our business top stories. Glad to have you back. Now we give you update of the stock market data as it went down yesterday on the floor of the Nigerian stock market. Indeed, the market closed negative 0.04%. It went down yesterday. The volume of trade, 317.808 million, value at 4.471 billion naira in a deals of over 6,000 uh, deals there, 6,376 deals there. Of course, the share index is still maintained that uh, 65,000 basis point. Of course, in terms of uh, the market cap, 35. 5.5 uh, for trillion naira. Uh, we'll look at the gainers indeed for the day. Uh, the likes of a uh, Guinness, of course, topping the gainers table there with a huge gain of 10% uh, uh, to close at 60 naira 50. Uh, Cobra, of course, look at Glasgow Smith uh, Klein, a company that's, uh, that is about to exit Nigeria after about 51 years of operation. It gained 9.74% uh, uh, yesterday to close at 10 naira 70. Uh, Cobra, of, uh, of course, Shellaram also gaining 9.73% close uh, in green there. 3 naira 72 cobo it and then on the day we look at the losers on the day of course the likes of a set plc also uh, losing 10 percent there the close at 27 cobo per share of course and mfm rise and northern nigeria flower mills plc closing negative there 9.89 percent to close at 12 naira 30 cobo of course john hot completing the top three losers on the day 9.52 percent it lost to close at one naira 33 cobo look at the activity charts and see how uh, the equity traded of course access bank uh, corporation the mother company of access bank uh, uh, doing 49.35 million volume of shares there sterling bank also coming second there 42 43 0.82 million and of course uni universal insurance plc also doing 28.86 million volume of shares they will look at the rest of the continent and see how the market had, uh, across africa also doing tunisia stock exchange down there in tunis close negative there 0.07 percent it went down on the down of course nmsc namibia stock exchange in southern africa also closing negative there 0.01 percent and down there in mauritius the market closed positive 0.04 percent these are the highlights of the stock trading on uh, uh, tuesday across the african continent of course, the market is on as usual. We'll give you up to date with all the market data from the rest of the continent. But for now, we we'll take a very quick break. When we come back, we we'll go into our discussion. Don't go away.
to have you back commodity prices there on the screen there that you saw a while ago well it's the business daily right here on trust television and we're going into our discussion now uh, we're looking at the economic implication of niger closing their airspace to nigeria and indeed to the rest of the world of, of the world what are the implications of all of this of, of all of this i'm being joined in the studio by professor yahya zayana ibrahim is a director of academic planning African Aviation, African Aviation and Aerospace University. Glad to have you on Business Daily. Uh, uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Yes, morning. it's, it's yeah, a pleasure. Uh, yes, Let me, let's start uh, this way. What does it mean for a country to close its aerospace? Um, you know, uh, all countries uh, on the earth have what we call territory. That is the total land area that the country possesses. Absolutely. And it has sovereignty over this territorial land, Buddha. No, mm. any country can enter without its permission. Mm. So the same thing applies to airspace. Any space on the atmosphere that mm. is within the territory of the country mm. is called airspace for that country. They have sovereignty for management over its territory. No flight can pass through that mm. aeros uh, aerospace without permission. Uh, so that is why internationally uh, there are many protocols and laws and multilateral agreements that were designed mm. essentially to ensure uh, efficiency, safety, and management of all these uh, species. Mm. Uh, I think if uh, I can recall, in 1944, there is what we call Chicago International Civil Aviation Convention that gave us to International Civil Aviation Authority, ICAO. Mm. They manage all the air spaces with different various laws on how to register air, air, airplanes, air, air, aviation safety, and many other things. Mm. Uh, among this, they ensure efficient and proper management of airspace to avoid collision and many other things. Mm. So when a country decided to say, I locked, I closed my airspace, meaning that no any airplane, whether commercial, uh, military and the like, has any right to pass through its airspace. Once you attempt it, they can, they can shoot it mm. because it is within its power. Mm. They can decide who to fly and when and what. Mm. So that's essentially what uh, airspace is all about. So when a country decided to close, meaning that no passage, mm. no country, no any aeroplane, uh, aeroplane can, can actually pass can through there. So what exactly. process do countries have to follow to take that kind, to arrive at that kind of decision? Well, it depends. In most cases, if you look at the recent happenings in Nigeria Republic, it's essentially for, for, for security reason mm. because they felt now ECOWAS are planning to use whatever means available to mm. ensure they instead the the ousted president of the mm. country. Mm. So to them, they felt threatened because if they allow that, probably they might, the easiest means to attack is to, you know, it's now, mm. the warfare is through aeroplanes mm. and the likes. Mm. So they decided to do that on security purposes. Uh, reason is that uh, if they do that, at least they have right now to shoot any, air, air, any, air, air, any air air aircraft, aircraft that are to rules. violate the rules. Mm. And another danger of it is that Niger is one of the countries that has the largest land mass in yes. Africa. Yes, over, and over one The size point. of over, land over mass one is equivalent plus. to the size of the air, uh, airspace mm. they have, so mm. which is a very serious problem. Mm. Because especially the landlocked country that you must pass Niger before you reach them, mm. they are in big mess mm. because you have to now increase probably many kilometers before you have to go around the country because mm -hmm. you have to avoid the aerospace before you can reach whatever mm -hmm. you want to. It's that, a serious problem. Uh, absolutely. Indeed, uh, before the coup, many people really do not understand the, uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, the importance of Niger to the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah, exactly. But this coup, uh, to me, has actually uh, brought out, like indeed, as porous as some people want to believe that Niger is, uh, is actually strategic to the rest of very, the world. Because very. with the close of the airspace, we are uh, actually, uh, based on what we are monitoring, yeah. that the cost of airfare has increased yes, drastically. Especially. It has to, for instance, now look at Nigeria mm. and many other West African countries. We have to pass Niger, easy, if our easiest route to, to Europe Mm. is to pass through Niger Republic. Mm. Now, if the Niger is blocked, you have to pass through Chad Republic, or you have to buy, bypass through other uh, West African country mm. are there. Meaning that addition of uh, thousands of kilometers. Mm. And of course, it has to come with a cost, mm. because the airlines, maybe uh, the danger now is that airlines will, 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 will increase their fares. Mm. Those who booked already, the airline has run cost because they have to increase amount of fuel to fuel the, mm. uh, the fuel jet to, mm. to reach the destination. It's a mm. serious uh, problem, which probably uh, echoes they need to look at. Definitely, they have to have a solution to the problem mm. what, of what is happening in Niger now. Otherwise, mm. 
the consequences will affect everybody. Of yeah. course, even the Nigerians will suffer a lot mm -hmm. because uh, they have some the money they are receiving whenever there is uh, any commercial air, mm -hmm. and they pass through uh, uh, their uh, land uh, air, uh, airspace. Exactly. So they this will affect them economically. Have, uh, seriously, they will mm -hmm. suffer the most. But at least for security reasons, they are, of course, they have nothing to lose now. Uh, so there is many for, many sanctions are coming up from mm -hmm. ECOWAS, US, and mm -hmm. many other countries. Mm -hmm. So they knew, okay, fine, we are going to suffer. You too, you will suffer. So that is a kind of we we don't care mm. what happened let what is going to happen let it happen mm. because they are in serious mess uh, the country will suffer a lot they will suffer more than the other countries but at least we too will suffer because mm. we have to pay more we have to buy more to reach our destination mm. so, so when you disconnect uh, nigeria just take nigeria as an example mm. imagine you disconnected nigeria with zero people will suffer absolutely because most of our businesses everything we imported things from europe and mm. once you have to pay more for cargoes and the likes it will cost more the prices of goods will go high mm. and many others okay, so the alternative route now for nigeria from nigeria for example if you're going to europe or asia now we we'll have to if you have to go through ghana maybe Kotunu and others yeah. uh what does that really mean economically economically if for instance we reach a stage whereby foreign airlines especially from Europe, cannot come to Nigeria because the cost is getting too high to them. Yes. So we're talking Nigeria will lose a lot because aviation is now coming up. GDPs, uh, the contribution to GDP is increasing with mm. the uh, current recent uh, aviation roadmap that we remodeled most of the airports in the country. So mm. we are getting a lot of revenue in billions of Naira, mm. contribute to more to GDP now. Mm. Now just imagine you have uh, the air, uh, foreign airlines stop coming. Mm. So that we end up with only local operations. It's a serious uh, problem which mm. will affect the GDP of the country. Mm. Now our air, probably our passenger has to go to the neighboring countries. And by that, we are taking our businesses, we are taking our GDPs to, to our neighboring countries, mm. which is a serious problem. So, so in a way, this crisis in Niger, and of course, they are closing their airspace to Nigeria and the rest of the and the other the some other the countries will affect the global aviation. Definitely, it, it does. It affects the global aviation, global economy, and many other things. Mm. Because when the cost of things goes high, it will definitely. And even the country, for instance, let's say they are exporting some perishable items mm. that requires Air, air, um, air transport to, 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 get to get delivered on time. Mm. Now you don't have uh, air, any air services available. And if they don't have any alternative routing, they will cost, it will, they will run at loss. Mm. And, mm. and, and, and this is even becoming more difficult because the airspace over Sudan and Libya is already close to commercial yeah, exactly, flights. Exactly. So adding a gel to so all of this is like blocking we are, yeah, the we are locking the African, African continent, continents okay, from the rest of the world. Just if you remember, recent Hajj fares had to go high because they have to bypass Sudan, which is a straight route. Mm. But because of the insecurity in Sudan, the, the passengers had to pay more mm. because the airline has to buy more, has to increase the mm. volume of fuel that can be sufficient for them to reach the destination. Mm. It's a serious problem. And the earlier all actors realize this is a better and provoke solution, the better for everyone. Mm. The coup has happened. They have ousted the president. Mm. Whether we like it or not, they must have what is the reason probably is, is up to them. It is high time, of course, to look at the best option to resolve this problem. The longer it takes, the mm. more consequence and uh, negative to the economy of the entire region. Mm -mm. I was reading just this morning that, that uh, about 500 passengers making their way back to the UK uh, this morning saw their British Airways flight diverted back to South Africa yeah. because they are unable to, to, pass, so, through, to yeah. pass through because the, the Niger. The, you know, when you look at it, technically, Niger is above Nigeria and with the whole land mass. mass so yes. you, Over 1.4 million square kilometers. Pass, yeah, you have yes. to pass through Niger. Mm. Now, if you uh, don't want to do that, you have to debate along uh, charge, probably. With charge, you have to pass through some part of portion of Sudan, Libya before you take it, mm. take the route again. Mm. Now it might be too costly for the air to for the British Airway to do that. Mm. Oh, they felt let's just think of if they drop them at South Africa now they can fly from South Africa to Nigeria, which is too costly mm. to the airline. Probably my, I might have booked my flight ahead of schedule so that it's, it won't cost much anything to me, but to the airline. But at least the time I spent probably. I might have arranged my meetings and programs, which I know normally six hours from UK to Nigeria. And now you have to spend probably about yeah, 24 hours. hours. Exa uh, exactly. Yeah, that, 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 that is huge. Now, yeah, it's huge. my concern is that uh, this is not the first coup we're having in Africa. Especially in recent times, we've had coup in Burkina Faso. Yeah. There's coup in Guinea. Of course, we're having also a military a government in Mali. Mali yeah. But the reaction we are getting from ECOWAS we didn't have get uh, the, that similar reaction when it's happening in those countries. What makes Niger so strategic? 
Um, <clears throat> probably what might be factor to this is that, you know, uh, some of the problem might be uh, instigated by political actors. Mm -hmm. You know, in, I think, in, uh, is it in Guinea, the, uh, the then ousted president wanted to extend his tenure, I think, uh, mm -hmm. beyond his constitutional limits, mm -hmm. and military took advantage of that and, and throw him away. Mm -hmm. uh, Poor Burkina Paso and Mali is a hinge on securities and all this, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the funny thing is that as then ECOWAS, we ju they just suspended them, nothing more. Mm. Now, of course, the president of Niger just came on board uh, through peaceful okay, yeah, democratic means, transition. Yes, yes. Uh, one of the items is that so, so far the best transition in Nigeria Republic. Mm. They, they had history of military coup. Mm. Uh, I think the closeness of Niger to Nigeria and interrelationship and coupled with the changes probably at ECOWAS, now we have new president, the president of Nigeria is the chairman mm. of the head of state. Mm. So he felt he has obligation to ensure uh, the ECOWAS step their authority that this thing has to stop. Mm. But I think we need to trace back. Why are we, just look at all these countries where this thing are happening. Are mostly Francophone, uh, yeah, exactly. uh, Francophone yes, countries. Yes. Then we need to find out what are the reasons behind that. When you look at most of the countries, there is strong sentiment, uh, resentment against uh, France. Uh, which fuel most of the crisis. the crisis. Now look at the leaders in Mali and, uh, and, and Guinea and Burkina Faso. They are willing to, to support Niger. They are ready militarily, whatever ECOWAS is willing to do. In fact, they are even mm. saying they are ready to break out of mm. ECOWAS if, 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 the, if that has to be. Mm. So it's like it's a new sentiment towards France. Of course, it's wrong to come up with military and took over power from mm. a democratically elected leader the mm. way they did in Niger. So probably that sentiment and anger is what is spoiling some of the decision of course is taken. But they need to also be very careful. There are limits to what you can do. Mm. If to say whatever decision and actions we are going to take, it will going to affect the, ruler, the, 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 the rulers mm. or the leaders of mm. the coup. Excellent. Mm. But we need most of the sanctions and the likes mm. will definitely affect the masses more. Mm. Mm. Uh, and Nigeria and Nigeria are just like a brother and sisters, mm. uh, especially when you go to the northern part of the country. Mm. They share so much in common in term marriages, uh, in pass, passing of in Katana, Even lang languages. A person yes. in Katana feel more at home with somebody in Maradi mm. than somebody in southern uh, part of uh, the country. Absolutely. So we have to be very careful of this. The mm. impact and the implication is going to be huge on the country and everyone around the region. Mm. So and, and already we're already feeling the yeah. impact. If you look at so the, look at the, the airspace there, the this is Niger, yeah. a very huge. Get that to the, down to your left there, you see Mali. Exactly. Uh, the share common boundary with Mali. Exactly. And on the other side, there's Chad. If you go up there, you see uh, Libya and, of Libya course, and or, Algeria. Uh, uh, Algeria. So uh, this is uh, a very huge uh, Cause and has a huge economic implication Seriously. for Nigeria and, of course, the rest of the continent. Exactly. Now, how do you think ECOWAS should, ECOWAS should handle this? There are so many uh, sanctions is coming in. They were yeah. telling the coup plotters to re restore back the hosted the, president. Okay. And, uh, and the early this morning, we got a, a report that the president himself has resigned. Yeah. And he has uh, uh, allowed to, allowed go, to home. go home, yeah. probably yeah. under security uh, yeah, uh, checks and, under all, uh, uh, and all of that. Yeah. But now, my concern mostly is this. We say democracy is the best form of government. But in the last couple of, in the, in, in the last two or three decades that we have practiced democracy from Ghana and of course to Nigeria and then the rest of Africa, it seem, we, seem, we seem to have created more people, more poor people Honest, than we were, we were honestly, having before. Honestly, we... Isn't it a very serious economic yeah, problem we are creating? It is, but it is high time for Africans to understand, we need to understand ourselves first before copying or buying any system of, uh, of governance. Mm. Look at the t Asian countries. Mm. Some of them are semi-democratic countries. They have mm. their own culture. Look yes. at Singapore and all of them, they mm. are developing Malaysia. Mm. Some are even monarchical. They have their own. Mm. They didn't copy democracy 100% the way we did. Even ours is too costly. Mm. Why can't we borrow a uh, British system of uh, democracy? We borrowed American that is very expensive. Look at how we are spending money. Mm. Senate, House, of all of them can perform the same function, mm. duplicating duties and the likes. Mm. So democracy might not necessarily be the way it is as the best form of government. It's up to the society to organize themselves and do the right thing. Mm. What do you think is the best for us? Mm. Myself and you knew the kind of democracy we are practicing in Nigeria is not what we need in Nigeria. Mm. We need a system whereby... Uh, Things should work. 
There should be reward and punishment. It's only in Nigeria somebody can steal money, but because democracy, the law say he's uh, guilty on mm. proven innocent, all mm. those things. Mm. We knew somebody might have stolen the money, but you cannot do anything mm. because of the system we have. The judicial system is weak. Our, our, our parliamentary system as well is weak, too mm. expensive, too costly. Even the presidential system, look mm. at it. Recently, how many ministers were screened? And all this will come with a huge cost on the economy. And uh, the uh, masses are suffering. Look absolutely. at the level of poverty, especially now with the removal of subsidy. Mm. Government ought to have pro provided alternatives through all these palliative report. To me personally, mm. you could have provided all the <coughs> stages yes. involved in palliative report. You do that For because absolutely. people are suffering. Mm. Government are celebrating. They have billions, trillions saved from the subsidy removal. And this are money taken from my own pocket and your own pocket. Mm. It's, not, it's just my own money and your own money. What we used to buy food to give out to our family members, now we have to use it to fuel our vehicles. It's, mm. it's, not, some, it's not magic. We mm. know where the money comes from. Mm. It's from you and me. Mm. So it's technically making us poorer than what we were. So that is high, it is high time, honestly, to have everything but, on but, our democratic but, but, but system. But in a way, we are more like discussing political business yeah, now. <laughs> because that is a, it's a political decision that is now affecting the economy. Yeah, the economy, economy. absolutely. Yeah. Now, let's look at uh, the, the coming of the military. Now, we've had them before. We blame them for all the woes yeah. that Nigeria suffered with all the economic problem, with all the structural adjustments exactly. of uh, 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 Bobangida yeah. that uh, led to the crash of the Naira and, and uh, as strong as it oh, were when it was introduced in the uh, 70s. After what we are now, we are, are now seeing the military again find their way back into the politics of Africa. What, why is coup again becoming so fashionable at this point? Don't you think, even if we, though the democracy, as bad as it is, some have said is the best form of government, maybe we should adopt another system that will just uh, take the military out completely? I think this has to be with the pillar of political leaders, the political actors. Mm. Because if, for instance, as a country in Nigeria, we, we were back to democracy in 1999, assuming the successive government had a very laudable plans and implemented it for the betterment of the country. Mm. The same problem we had in 1999, we still have them. Mm. Do we have stable electricity? What was the campaign for then? Mm. Do we don't have it. Mm. No functional refinery in Nigeria. The largest oil producer in Africa. Come on. Mm. These are the things that will make people angered. If to say the whole system is working properly, we can see changes. Of course, there are improvements in some other areas. Nobody mm -hmm. can say there is no improvement. There are improvements. Mm -hmm. But the level could have been better or even double to what we have today. Mm -hmm. Some key sectors of the economy, some key sectors that has with the lives of the society mm -hmm. ought to have been addressed by now. Mm -hmm. Health system should have been working by now. Our educational system should be functioning by now. Absolutely. But what is happening? Political elite took their country, mm -hmm. children out of mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. to study. Uh, 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 absolutely. And uh, it is uh, uh, not working. E e yes. Another area I want us to to talk about with regards to this uh, economic implication of this coup is uh, the Nigeria cutting power supply to Niger. Is it that is Nigeria not reneging on the agreement signed a decade ago that prevent uh, uh, Niger from, from you okay. know operating down you know in their country? You know, um, Riba Niger start from Putajalon yes, down to the to Riba Niger in Nigeria where it's reached its confluence in, in Lokoja. Mm. Uh, part of the international agreement, we normally, you know, once you that is, that is what you call uh, mouth of the river and the and the and the and the source and mouth, mm. it flows down to Nigeria. If, for instance, Niger decided to dam it, mm. we couldn't have a kind have, of dam. Exactly, we can't have any water. So it was part of that international agreement that allows Nigeria to dam at Kainji so that we can have hydroelectricity and supply to Niger mm. in return. Mm. It's not that we are giving them for free. Mm. Uh, of course. It's part of agreement. Now, because of the coup, we cut the electricity. What about if they source money from Russia anywhere and decided to build them tomorrow? Mm. Because you two have violated the agreement. So there are certain things we have to consider. If you cut electricity today, it's not the military, coup, military leaders that are affected. It is the masses, the masses that will the be affected the most. Mm. And we have violated the agreement we knew we signed with them. Of course, uh, I, I was glad when I had the president saying all the decision he's taking is not him as Nigerian president, but as a head of, of course, the court. Of but this is a purely Nigeria and Niger relation, uh, agreement. Mm. Uh, so even yeah, if some of them, in fact, they are looking at it as Nigeria fighting them, not really. The, yeah, that is the, the, the general rule. Especially when you go to the, uh, the, the border, the border community. That is yes. the sentiment mm. because people interrelate intermarriage and they have already blended it's mm. only that the all this uh, uh, international demarcation this is nigeria this is niger when mm. you go to katna sokoto uh, kebi mm. jigawa Bruno. Of you, Bruno, mm. you cannot mm. separate people mm. they inter they are just the same so somebody who in fact 
There are certain villages in Nigeria when you go, you cannot see Naira. They spend mm. more of Niger currencies than Naira. Mm. So with this, you cut electricity, you yeah. tell definitely uh, 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 the, the impact uh, is going to be... Uh, uh, absolutely, uh, the impact yeah. is going to be it's huge. And of course, it did quite and a whole lot need to be done. Yeah. But just before we go, I just want to get your take, just something away from what we're discussing now. Okay. Uh, the new president is on board, and of course, he has uh, inaugurated tax uh, policy, uh, fiscal policy and yeah. tax reforms committee, yeah. and he's targeting 18% to... Uh, GDP, uh, 18 percent. Yeah. Uh, uh, tax, to to tax to GDP ratio. ratio. Yeah. That's in three months. Uh, do you think this is achievable? Well, if there is will, it's possible. But for now, we are going to see how the committee will try and achieve that. Mm. It's all about will. Mm. If we are, you know, Nigerians are blessed. We have intelligent guys in this country, intelligence mm. that can do a lot of creative thinking to bring out solutions. Mm. Our major challenge in Nigeria is what? Implementation. Mm. The ideas are there. Mm. The research is that everything that will make the country better. We knew what we do A, B, C, D, E, things will change for better. Mm. But are we willing to do that? To do this. Let's uh, hope uh, and give uh, the new president the benefit of doubt that he's willing and uh, capable to do the implementation. Uh, 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 as we have seen in subsidy. So it's not only subsidy. We want to see the pilot is also implemented. Implemented, okay. And properly that too. Advan take, uh, that to your own advantage, let the masses also see something to their own advantage. Uh, uh, By uh, that, people will take you serious. Uh, 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 abs uh, absolutely. Yeah, Professor Yahya Zayana Ibrahim, Director of yeah. Academic Planning, African Aviation and Aerospace University. I must thank you, thank you so for much your time of business. It's it's a very interesting yeah. discussion there. Thank you so having much. a time is always our, our friend. Yeah. Thank when you we're so having much. a phone like this, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you so it's much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yes. Uh, yeah. With that, is a wrap on the show today. Join us tomorrow for more. I am Yusuf Akogun.